everyone, it's me Hiroshi back again with another video for you. So, I really apologize for all my viewers because I did. I promised you I'll make more videos for you to learn about, but I can't do it because I have the COVID has striked a lot all over the world, so. My classes go online, which is really hard for me. So that's why I didn't make any videos since then. But now I thought about what you're thinking. So I created a video for you, which is about symbiotic relationships. But just before we start, like the video, share it, and subscribe if you haven't. So let's start. So we're talking about symbiotic relationships. A symbiotic relationship is a, one of the one species and another different species connect to make a good team to create a symbiotic relationship. So here's, I have four examples for you, like a honey badger and a honey guide. So here's what they do. The honey guide first just finds a beehive and then when the honey when the honey guide finds a honey badger or human to bust in and when the predator, when the honey badger or human finds a honey guide that means the honey guide has found honey so it, the honey badger or human follows it and then the it's for the other animal's turn so for the honey badger it busts in with the strength and claws and then it gets a piece of honey for the honey guide and the honey badger itself. And it eats it. And so a lot I know that a lot of people didn't hurt about the honey badger. The honey badger is kind of like a, a mammal. It's like a mist with a measle, weasel and a wild dog. And it's actually in the weasel family. <laughs> and it's one of the toughest animals in the world. It could deal with lions. So that's really brave. And the honey guide. A honey guide is a small little bird who finds honey for animals and itself. So the honey guide actually has his honey guide. And you see the end name part, guide. So the, the guide part comes when it guides peep, the honey badger to the, to the exact place. And moving on to the next example, the clownfish and the sea anemone. The, the clownfish we all heard about is like a fish, but, but the clownfish is not the best swimmer, so it has to hide in the sea anemone. And, and the sea anemone has stingers on it. So the clownfish does a little dance, filling with itself with slime, and then it could go in here, so the sea anemone will think it's actually like one of its tentacles, and then it's think of it it's like the sea anemone, like the clownfish's house, that it could lay eggs in it, and then it could still stay in there and protect itself and its eggs. And it, you see this little part? That's where the clownfish lays eggs. And. When the sea anemone covers it up, the predator wouldn't even see it. And the so the here's the here's what it does. So the clown, the clownfish protects the sea anemone from butterfly fish, which take it apart. It could eat part of its tentacles. And the sea anemone's house part is protecting the clownfish and its eggs. So moving on to the next. So you could find this example in Africa and you could find this example in the ocean. So we are having a next, another example, which is, and I actually like this example, which is the wolf and the raven. So we all know about wolves, right? So, but you never heard of a raven. We're just going to tell you, we're just going to tell that about just in a few minutes. But let's see what this 
these two animals have the goods. So the wolf leads the raven and itself to lunch. While the raven tells the wolves about danger. So I'm just going to talk about the raven. Because just for the people who don't know about raven. So a raven is similar to the crow, but it's not actually it. So the crow and the raven have differences. The raven has red or white eyes, or and the crow has black eyes, blending it with the feathers. So that's the differences. And here we have a final example, and which is kind of similar to this one. The rhino and the ox pecker. So the ox peckers eat the ticks, which are like parasites who drink, who, who eat the blood of the rhinos. So the ox pecker actually eat them because it's a tasty snack for them. So that gives the rhinos a healthy body. And they are. The ox pecker's goods is when it flies, the rhino can see it because it has poor eyesight. And it can also warn the rhino about danger. And here's one fact. The, the ox pecker can actually hung on to the, on the rhino while it charges. So that's a creature power. Rhinos are one of the strongest animals in the world. So... Those are all the examples I have. And you can also find this example in the same way in this way, in Africa. So these are all the examples I have. But if you can find more examples, you could tell me down below. So thanks for watching. Bye.